And hello everyone, uh, welcome back to our open form videos. So I'm going to continue where we left off. So in the last video, we saw that uh, Boyan Businesk pimple form was able to solve for this uh, this very complicated geometry and was able to give us good results. Now unfortunately, the, the case is that uh, for, for CHD multi-region form, it does not use a Boyan Businesk pimple form solver and also for open form, the open form foundation version, uh, there is no more buoyant Businesk pimple form. In fact, the Businesk equation of state can be applied to any buoyant C solver. So uh, they basically, they basically just got rid of the. Uh, they got rid of the what do you call that, buoyant Businesk pimple form altogether. So that was good in terms of a convenience thing. However, in terms of stability, uh, we don't we don't get the same exact same results. So there is something we have to do to try and make a buoyant pimple form behave like buoyant business pimple form in in terms of stability. Okay, so uh, that's that's the that's the idea here. Okay, so uh, all right. So some some uh, this these are the the make files the the solvers and everything. So um, yeah, the idea here uh, is to try and uh, see the difference between uh, buoyant pimple form and buoyant business pimple form. Okay. Um, yeah. So we'll try to cover that now. Okay. We'll try to cover that now and do it quickly. All right, so uh, not so it's not to bore you, of course. Um, yeah, so this one is the one that works. Boy and boost in as pin perform, and let's take a look at the equations that are being used. Okay, so this is uh, okay, wrong one. Let me see. Open form. Yes, this is buoyant Boussinesk pin perform. They basically solve three equations. One is the pressure equation, which is the the mass balance part. So it's all this mass of code over here. And we know this thing actually works because we saw it in our case. All right. There's also the momentum equation or U equation, which we can see here, and we can actually see what are the. We can actually see what the difference. Uh, I mean, we can actually see what the equation is like. There's a d d t u, which is the time derivative of u, and then there's a divergence of phi and u. This is the advection term, of course, uh, and then there'll be this moving reference frame, which is for like uh, a moving, moving uh, boundary conditions or whatever. That's like a rotor, for example. If you have a moving rotor or somewhat, you you use this moving reference frame. This one kind of we can just ignore it, unless you're talking about a uh, dynamic mesh or whatever moving reference frame you have. If I'm not wrong, it is this. I could be wrong. Let me check. MRF. Okay, this is messy. Okay, never mind. I won't touch this. Just ignore that term, okay? Uh, okay, so you have your turbulence terms over here and FV options. And this is the term for temperature. So in Boyan Business pimple form, uh, Temperature is kind of solved directly because you have a FVM DDT of temperature, then you have a DDT phi of T, then you have some Laplacian uh, term here using alpha effective. Alpha effective is the sum of your turbulent uh, uh, diffusion, uh, and of course you have your um, your usual alpha anyhow, your usual uh, uh, thermal diffusivity of the fluid. Okay. So all this is here. There's also an option for radiation, but I'm not covering radiation uh, in this video. And FV options. This is for any source term you want to have. And how is the how is the uh, how is uh, what do you call that? How is buoyancy accounted for? You have this rho k over here. Rho k is uh, is not the absolute uh, density. It is actually um, Density relative to it's kind of uh, how do you say this? Uh, let me see here. Okay, we we know that density changes, right? We know that density changes due to heat. So you can have rho equals to rho naught plus some beta t. 
rho not beta t, something like that. Okay, so this is uh, this is some kind of uh, expensivity formula. So there there is some uh, some part. Let's call this c one t. So there'll be some constant times t. So the density of the fluid will be some reference density times the gradient times the temperature. So this is the some coefficient you can have here. So uh, if you divide everything throughout by rho naught, so rho over rho naught equals to one plus c one over rho naught t. Okay, so that's roughly what you will have. You can see here rho k equals to one minus beta t minus t ref. Now this beta is something to do with this uh, coefficient here. Of course, uh, there is a there's a little bit of discrepancy because I there's a, another t ref over here, but this actually just uh, this t ref times beta is actually um, not ex not very big. So, uh, but the idea is that you have a linear relationship between uh, rho k and the temperature. And rho k is actually uh, uh, something, it's a relative uh, density. It's not absolute density. You divide it by some uh, reference density here. That's why you have that one term in front. Of course, uh, you can, when you have the t ref and beta at the back, then you can. Um, yeah, you have T ref and beta at the back. Uh, you can play around with the intercept of the of the yeah intercept of this uh, equation, and then of course, uh, I mean both of them are linear equations, right? So the idea is that you have a linear relationship, and the variable you are you are using is uh, is not absolute density; it's sort of a relative density. So this is roughly what rho k means. I did not do a very uh, thorough derivation but it just gives you a rough idea what it's talking about okay so you have the your u equation here which just deals with uh, as you can see over here u and then your pressure equation which deals with mass balance okay and this is from Boyan Boussinesk uh, pimple form now, buoyant pimple form is slightly different. So this is where the source code is. Of course, I'll paste all of this in uh, open f the, the description. Again, the pressure equation, it looks pretty messy. So uh, I kind of skipped that part uh, because I uh, just want to focus your attention on the U equation and the energy equation because that's, that's the, the results that we have and that's actually what matters. So now, now I, want to, I want you to take a look at the U equation, for example. You have the MRF thing here, whatever that is. Okay, but you see this uh, FVM DDT of rho and U. If you compare that to buoyant Boussinesq pimple foam, this one just deals with velocity. Whereas in buoyant pimple foam, uh, uh, you have a density, you have density and velocity here. Yeah, you have density and velocity here. So you have a rho and u, and you have a phi and u, of course. But you 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 see that most of the time we have this uh, rho and u being used here. So there's an absolute density being used here. Likewise, for energy equation, we have rho times the enthalpy or internal energy, depending on which uh, which equation you want to use. Okay, depending on which equation you want to use, uh, you can use uh, this. Uh, you can use uh, internal energy or enthalpy for this, and um, yeah, this is the energy term. You don't deal with temperature per se directly. You deal with all of this, and you notice that the the key difference here is this use of rho. Okay. And you, you take a look between this and this. This one actually deals with temperature directly. However, this one deals with enthalpy directly. And you have uh, density here. So there are a number of things that... Now, this, this should give you clues as to what might cause the instability. Because uh, depending on how these equations are solved and iterated... Um, you will see these numerical instabilities appear and disappear. 
So, volume boostiness pimple foam, we know it's a very uh, stable solver. However, the options are limited. We cannot alter the parental number with temperature and everything. And we can't use it in open foam 8 or, or the open foam orc version of uh, the solver. And we cannot use it in CHT multi region foam. So that's problematic. Alright, so what what then can we do? We try and make uh, we try and make a uh, buoyant pimple foam behave like buoyant business, uh pimple foam. All right. So what can we do? What's the difference here? Okay. One of the biggest uh, differences, of course, besides the H and E. Okay. H and E uh, is actually this density here. So this gives us two things to play with, and those both of them are actually inside inside your uh, thermophysical properties. So we go look at constant and look at thermophysical properties. Okay. Um, okay, so where where do we control our density? We can control it here. And where do we uh, play around with this uh, H or E? H or E is uh, determined by this, uh, this uh, entry over here. You either use sensible internal energy or you use enthalpy over here. Now, which one is actually better? Um, okay, so um, generally speaking, okay, generally speaking, um, internal energy is better suited for fluids. I mean, liquids, incompressible liquids, and enthalpy is generally better for uh, air. Okay, or compressible fluids. Okay. Now, okay, so. Uh, which one is better? According to this website anyway, uh, this is from Open from Org, release 2.2.0, Thermal Physical Multiphase Energy. So I'm going, I'm going to put this in the description. Okay, um, let's see, where is it? Dun, 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 dun. Uh. Ah, okay. Alright, okay. So this is somewhere in the middle of page, right? In the middle of the page, where right? it says runtime uh, and selectable energy solution variable. Um, so uh, let's see. It says here, for example, E is the preferred form of energy for liquids. In H, can be preferable for steady state and in some cases of transient gaseous problems, particularly combustion. So for uh, incompressible fluids, we tend to want to use sensible internal energy. And that is supposed to increase the stability. So that's why, uh, for example, in this case where they, they, they went to patch in open form 7, they said that uh, they improved the convergence and stability of several tutorials by updating code settings to solve for internal energy rather than enthalpy. So internal energy, uh, using the internal energy to solve, usually works for fluids. So actually, um, that's why that's why I have actually uh, uh, put by default, I mean in the solver before, I use sensible internal energy. And of course there are some there are some uh, there are some changes you need to make to the uh, FV solutions and uh, FV schemes. So this these are the things that usually come out. FV solution. Alright, what, what do you need to include? You need to include the the, the en internal energy E here in your in your settings here also for this uh, also for this uh, inside your um, uh, file under these entries where you you have our uh, solvers you need to include internal energy here as well which is this small little e you see here okay where else where else do you need to be mindful of you need to be mindful inside FV schemes so one example of that is that you need this 5vp over here this entry will be requested Okay, OpenFoam will give you an error message saying, no, we cannot find divergence 5V and P. Uh, if, we cannot, uh, if we cannot find it, uh, they'll, they'll display a message and tell you, please uh, uh, put the entry in. So I'll give you an example of what that looks like. Okay, I'll give you an example of what that looks like. Alright, so if I delete that and I try to run buoyant uh, pimple foam, for example, all right, so this is oh, this is the Boussinesque version. Let me let me try with the other one. So FV schemes. So let me quit. 
Okay, I'm lagging because I'm running a case probably in the background and I'm video recording, but whatever. Maybe. Uh, let's see. Salome Poly here Exchanger. Okay, I go in here and go to System FE Schemes. Okay, and let me just get rid of this variable, comment it out, and let me run buoyant pimple foam. Okay, so it will give an error. See, F uh, foam fatal error, entry divergence 5, uh, 5p not found in divergence schemes. So at least these errors are very easy to solve. And most of them, uh, most of time, most of the time for open foam, if you don't have these entries, open foam will give you this sort of error saying, okay, I don't have this particular entry in this FE schemes, please put it in. So um, these, these, these uh, are relatively easy to solve because they're very good error messages. So if you want to solve for internal energy, this is what you must do. Okay. So go to constant see thermal physical properties and you can see sensible internal energy here unfortunately uh, as you can see uh, yeah. unfortunately as you can see um, a buoyant pimple foam as you can see uh, well this in theory is supposed to make the case more stable right because uh, liquids prefer internal energy it did not make it uh, stable as what I wanted because you can see the coral number just blowing up like that. What then is the other? You see the coral. Yeah, now the case has crashed again, as we saw. So the coral number has stopped. I mean, stopped the solver from running, and then we have this negative temperature. So what's going on? Okay, what's going on here? What can we do? Well, the next stop, since we already uh, tried to deal with the H and E part, for the most part, we tried to deal with. Uh, H and E. Um, the other thing is to uh, then deal with the row because uh, what the, the main difference between buoyant pimple foam and buoyant business pimple foam is either the H and E portion for the energy and rho uh, also for the energy equation and the uh, U equation. Both of them have rho inside. So an instability in rho, for example, could cause uh, a whole problem, a whole set of numerical issues within buoyant pimple foam. So we'll try to deal with that in the next video, but hopefully this video gives you an idea of you know, where this little uh, bug can be, okay? Why buoyant business pimple foam works and why buoyant pimple foam at first doesn't work, okay? So I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.